Welcome to Dark News. Dark News. Dark News. Oh, shit. They'll never know what it means to have a private moment to themselves. BBC posted their first article about Silk Road and Tor. Oh, I don't have to go to the street corner and get shot? I think Bitcoin means a thousand Silk Roads. This is a show about cryptocurrencies, anonymity, and uncensorship. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to Dark News Live for August 19th, 2014. It's been quite a week in the crypto world, particularly in terms of prices. We've had quite a price crash across the board in the last week. We're seeing some strong recovery uh, just coming up today, but uh, it was it was a heck of a week for speculators. So we're going to be talking about that in just a moment. And of course, we'll be at answering your questions as we usually do at the end of the show. If you would like to submit your questions for the show, please do send them in through Twitter. The Google Hangout Q&A app seems to have mysteriously gone missing from the interface. So submit them through Twitter. You can send a tweet anytime, including during the show now to at Dark News Show on Twitter and also using the hashtag Dark News. And we'll take care of those questions at the end of the show. We'll also touch on a couple uh, stories from the week. We'll talk about why we may have seen some of this, this price crashing during the week and uh, also some good news about the underground economy in the United States doubling over a period of just a few short years. So we'll talk about that in just a moment. But let us first start off with the dark market prices for the week. These are the dark market prices for August 19th, 2014. So the Precious metals and current cryptocurrency market cap right now sitting at $229 trillion. That's down just about 1% from last week. Cryptocurrencies alone now sitting at $6.66 billion. That's down almost uh, 16% from $7.92 billion last week. That's mostly Bitcoin, but also all of the other altcoins that are being traded on exchanges. The dollar gained about 2% and 1% relative to silver and gold respectively, uh, which is why we see this, this small downturn in the precious metal market cap for the last week. Bitcoin dollar gained about 18% relative to Bitcoin. You can now buy 2.09 millibits with every US dollar since last week. And Darkcoin had a terrible week in terms of price. We're seeing some recovery today. In fact, uh, at the time that I created this chart just an hour ago, Darkcoin was sitting at number nine in the rankings. I think I may, I saw it dip down to number 10 even below Dogecoin yesterday. And it now seems to be up sitting around to number seven or so, but it was at number five last week. You can now buy 0.54 dark coins with every US dollar. That's all the way down from 0.19 dark coins with every US dollar. And the dollar gained 184%. Now, if you bought into dark coin, when we first started tracking it on the show, you still still sitting pretty good. Uh, the dollar is still down 53% relative to dark coin right now. But uh, what I expect to see in most of these cryptocurrencies is a rebound, but it was definitely a tough week for privacy centric cryptocurrencies and cryptocurrencies in general. A non coin also a rough week dollar gained 50%, 56% relative to a non coin. It's now sitting at number 53 in those cryptocurrency market cap rankings. Fedora coin uh, dollar gained about 11% and it's sitting at number 128. Bitcoin uh, was the one cryptocurrency that bucked this trend. It actually gained about 0.54% relative to the dollar and went up from number 25 to number 16. And I believe that was maybe sitting around 15 yesterday, but that's a that's a nine uh, a nine place advantage for Bitcoin in the last week. Monero, uh, the dollar gained 36% relative to relative to Monero. So Monero had a very, very rough week, 
uh, up until yesterday and then had a kind of a rebound. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. But it was actually went from number 12 to number, I want to say number 20 something or so. Now it's back to 12 again today. So we'll take a look, a look at that in just a moment. The cryptocurrency that had the worst week ever was Cloak Coin. The dollar gained 292% relative to Cloakcoin. You can now buy 6.75 Cloakcoins with every US dollar. It sank from number 21 in the rankings to 34, and uh, that's a 13 place disadvantage. X currency also lost a bit of value over the last week. Dollar gained about 26% relative to that, and not much change at all in ammo prices. So this week was all about cryptocurrencies taking a dip. So if we look at some of the currencies that we track on the show, we can see here uh, Monero down and then up a little bit, but really dramatic moves for Cloak Coin in the last couple of weeks and for Dark Coin in just the last week. I had a guy who said on Twitter that he basically had uh, uh, invested in Dark Coin in just the last week and really lost his shirt on this deal. So I feel for all those people that have been late to the dark coin party and uh, I hope you didn't sell at the bottom too. If we look at the clock coin uh, charts for just the last week, started out the week just below $2.5 million in market cap, bottomed out below $500,000. That's like a five fold uh, decrease in the price. And now rebounding up, up a little bit, uh, just about uh, maybe 75, hundred dollars coming up on one million and a similar story for its but bitcoin price uh, right around zero zero one bitcoins all down all the way to zero 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 two bitcoins if we look at the monero charts uh it was really all over the place starting uh the week around let's see 5.5 .5 million dollars bottom bottoming out um, maybe around 3.75 million and then back up already to, uh, you know, coming up on, I would say about 4.5 million. So quite a rebound for a Monero in just the last day, but it's been a, it's been a tough week for Monero, for Monero for sure. Some people said, oh, dark coin is down. Are people going into narrow? Not so far, not so far. We're not seeing that. And lastly, for the, the dark coin charts, starting out the week above the $20 million mark, bottoming out not too far from 5 million. So that's almost a five-fold decrease like Cloakcoin and now already back over the 10 million mark and uh, recovering much of its its rankings. But in general, uh, Bitcoin, altcoin still significantly down for the last week and they have a long way to go before they've can they've recovered that uh, that position. And if we look at the top 10 altcoins below Litecoin, Litecoin is still uh, it really took a battering with the uh, with a lot the other cryptocurrencies as well. But if we look at the ones below Litecoin, Ripple still sitting at number three, uh, Next sitting at number four, both uh, weathered the storm quite well, I have to say, in the last uh, in the last couple of weeks. And if we zoom in and look at the log logarithmic version of the chart, what we're seeing again is we uh, talked about before, dark coin, this kind of this uh, pinkish salmon color in the chart here, huge dip down, now recovering in the last day. Uh, significantly down on pure coin. BitShares X was one of the one cryptocurrencies that did well in the last the last week. Dark coin fell below uh, BitShares X, pure coin, name coin, Doge coin. I mean, it really, <laughs> I think it was below, it's below made safe at one point. So it really lost some, some footing in the rankings for a little while there, uh, but now coming back up and we can see this dramatic uh, boomerang of Monero here at the bottom, way below these other cryptocurrencies that are on the chart here. I mean, really it fell down to uh, very, very low levels briefly there, but it's rocketing back up, maybe about a four fold increase or something like that in just the last day. So dramatic change for Monero. So the question on all of our minds, I think, is what the fork is going on with this, this price crash? And to understand that, we're gonna take a look at this article just very briefly by uh, Michael Carney, a look at the forces driving Bitcoin down 23% in one week. So he points out at the beginning here, we've had some pretty good news recently that you would think would drive up the price. We had uh, Tim Draper revitalizing 30,000 dark coins from the FBI that were stolen 
uh, from the Silk Road. We had um, Zappo receiving a, a pretty record amount of, of startup funding in the form of $40 million. Uh, we've had rumors that PayPal may be accepting a Bitcoin uh, soon or that they're looking into this process. So why did we have this price crash? Well, this article presents three possible explanations. And I think maybe the second one is the one that's getting the most traction right now, but they're probably all uh, related in some way. So the first one was this bit licensing stuff. Uh, speculators were... Um, expecting the bit license stuff to be positive indicator they're expecting it to be more lenient i guess in terms of what was going to be proposed and it turned out to be not lenient at all it's a pretty rough proposal uh, quite onerous for any business that would wish to do bitcoin business in new york either with customers there or to actually be started there and so the author of this article says well speculators who are betting on a more rapid price appreciation based on this what they're expecting from the news may have gotten caught out of out of line trading on margin and forced to sell their bitcoin holdings in order to cover their losses so over at uh, bitfinex which is based in hong kong apparently uh, you can do all kinds of different trading you can do shorts and and uh, all this kind of this advanced market trading and he believes that there were a number of traders that were expecting there to be much more positive news in terms of regulations. And then we heard the Bitcoin, the, the uh, bit licensing proposals. We heard the, uh, the, the, uh, re the regulations in uh, the European banking sector and so forth. And as a result, there was an apparent flash crash August 14th as the, the margin traders were forced to liquidate a bunch of their funds. And uh, he says there were they were liquidated only more than thirty million dollars worth of swap positions, and you know as each as each trader sells the positions at a loss, that has a cascading effect on the price and investor behavior. Now the the third explanation here is uh, not to do with uh, bit licensing. It's not to do with this the swap trading. It's based on merchant adoption, saying that, look, uh, Dell, Overstock, Expedia, they're all doing millions of dollars per month in combined commerce uh, through Bitcoin, selling Bitcoin for dollars and cashing out these these customers coming customer funds coming in. And there's millions of dollars more uh, happening in other companies that are smaller altogether. And so it's not a huge amount of the Bitcoin transaction volume, but it may have a significant so one more news story that we're going to tackle here before we jump into your questions. So uh, a recent study done by Edgar Fage of an economist, an economist at the University of Wisconsin-Madison suggests the size of the underground economy in the US in 2012 reached $2 trillion. Another study done by another economist estimated only $1 trillion in 2009. So that's a twofold, a doubling uh, increase in the size of the US underground economy from 2009 to 2012. And this underground economy, it's business activities uh, that are not getting reported to the government, they're not getting taxed, and it can span everything from uh, selling drugs and weapons to just like off the books jobs in childcare, construction, you know, all kinds of stuff. And we have some more economists commenting on these findings saying that, uh, quote, the severity of the recession and the profound weakness of this recovery may mean that a lot more people have under entered the underground economy and have had to stay there longer. But overall, I think this is very good news. So here's the thing the these economists are saying, well, look, this recession's going on, it's dragging on a while, and that's caused people to uh, be stuck in the underground economy because there, there, there's a way for you to make ends meet in the underground economy that you can't find in the above board economy. But what I would say is actually happening is, look, the this economic recession is a complete farce. 
there's going to be no recovery to this recession. The economy is not going to return to what it once was, uh, you know, a decade or two ago. The golden era of the United States and the petrodollar and, and all this other stuff, mass rampant consumerism, all based on propping up the dollar and uh, loans, endless loans and debt, that is not going to recover. There's This is not a recession. It is a death knell to that type of economy and what we're going to see replace it is a new a new kind of economy i think that cryptocurrencies are going to be at the forefront of that and i think the underground the underground economy is going to continue to grow it's not going to shrink back to its original size at the start of these financial collapses it's going to continue to grow and that will continue to be the case until the state withdraws its censorship of markets. What we're seeing is a censorship of markets of, about people avoiding censorship, looking for ways to get outside of that censorship, which they need to do in many places of the world in order to survive, including the United States. I'm not a person that needs to do this. Um, if I wanted to, I could uh, participate in the, the open economy. You know, there's lots of jobs available to me, but there, is, there are millions of people in the United States for whom this is not a really good option. And so they find, you know, under the table means of making making their way and getting food on the table and all that stuff. And that's going to continue to be an attractive option for them so long as the state uh, interrupts in these in the in the free market economy as it exists as a sort of platonic ideal. So I think that it's a very interesting indicator to see this this economy uh, double in size in just the last few years, and I think that we'll continue to see this trend uh, persist.